look at complementary events. Now, complementary events are talking about um, a particular event that may not be that event. So if we're talking about a particular event, the complement of that would be something that is not that event. Now what I'm talking about, I'll show you using, the exa using an example. Let's start off with boy. So I've got my event column here and my complementary event here. And starting with the event of being a boy, the complementary event of a boy must be being a girl. All right, guys? So um, if it's not a boy, it must be a girl. It cannot be anything else. So we just say girl. Another way you can write it is say not being a boy, not boy. So you can use the word not and that will be the complement. But because if it's not a boy, it must be a girl, we can just say it's a girl. All right, guys? So that's the complement of being a boy. Another example is a success. If it's not a success, guys, we can say it's a failure. So failure would be the complementary event. Or you could also say not successing, not being a success. You can also say that. Again, you can use the word not to be safe. Now, um, let's say raining. The complementary event of raining is not raining. You have to say not raining. A lot of people tend to say sunny or something like that, but sunny is not the only complement of raining. The complement of raining could be sunny, hailing, storming, windy. There could be so many different types of weathers that would be the comp that would be included in the complement of raining. So you have to say not raining, and that will include all the different type of components of weather. All right, guys. So say not raining in that particular um, events that have more than one different type. Okay. Now Tuesday. The complement of Tuesday is including. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So instead of listing those all out, you can just say not Tuesday. So not Tuesday is the complement of Tuesday. Simple as that. Now even, if it's even, the complement of that is when it's not even. Now when it's not even, it must be odd. Because if it's not even, it must be odd. It can't be anything else. So because it's in the, in the number um, plane, there's only even numbers and odd numbers and nothing else. So we say if it's not even, it's odd. Now another one, head. If it's a head, um, the complement would be not head. Or, to be safe, we can say fa um, sorry, tail. Um, tail is the complementary event of head, because if it's not a head, it must be a tail. So that is the complement. And you can also say that head is the complement of tail. That's also another way you can look at it. All right, guys, so try to remember that for me, and let's try the questions together. So let's start with question one. Write down the complementary event of tossing tails on a coin. So if we're tossing tails on a coin, what's not tossing tails on a coin? What's the opposite of that? So how can we write the complement? Well, it must be tossing heads. It's tossing heads is when it's not tossing tails. It must be tossing heads, there's nothing else. So we have to say tossing heads. All right guys, so as simple as that, is that's just the complement. Now question two, uh, write down the complementary event of rolling a six on a die. So if we're rolling a six on a die and we want the complementary event of that, it must be rolling one, two, three, four, or five. And so everything but that six. So these are its complements, okay? All right, question three. Write the complementary event of winning a game. Now, if we're not winning, we must be losing or also having a draw. So you must include both. It's either losing Having a draw would also be not be included in winning, so that's also part of the complement. So you can say losing or having a draw. Now, if you don't like to write too much like that, you can simply say not winning. So if you just simply say not winning, that would just be the complement of winning. So use the word not if you're quite unsure or if you don't want to list out too many things. All right, guys? All right, now what I'm going to talk to you about is, um, probability-wise, what complementary events can do to you. Um, any particular probability. So have a look guys, we're looking at probability now. Um, probability of any event plus the probability of its complementary event will always add to one, will be one, which is one is 100%, one is 100 over 100, which is 100%, isn't it? So we usually call one as the total probability, being 100%, being certain. So that's what it is. So a probability of something and its complement added together will always give the full probability of one. So therefore, we can say the pro a probability of the complementary event is one minus probability of being the event. Make sense, guys? All I did was minus that, subtract that onto the other side, and we get one minus the probability of the event. 
All right, guys, now I'll show you doing some questions. You might get a better understanding. Let's go straight to question four. We've got a die here. Um, a die is rolled. It says find the probabilities. We're going to start with A, probability of a five. Now, probability of five is just this one, isn't it? So, simply, one, five is just one out of all the outcomes of one, two, three, four, five, and six. And see how that six are outcomes? So it's pretty much one out of the six. That's probability of being a five. One out of the total outcomes of six. Simple as that. Now B, what we're gonna do is now find the probability of not a five. Not a five is the complement of being a five. Remember what I told you before um, this question? I told you that probability of a complementary event is one minus the event. So, see that's the probability of being a five. So to calculate the probability of not being a 5, we'll just subtract away that probability from 1. Simple as that. So 1 minus 1 over 6 will give us 5 over 6. And that's the probability of not being a 5. And you can see that those two events are complementary, and that's why I could use that little rule. All right, guys, and you can see that 1 over 6 plus 5 over 6 would add up to 6 over 6, which is 1. That's the total probability. We talked about this earlier, didn't we? And another way you could actually do this is maybe just count up the ones that are not fives. And again, you'll probably much get to five over six as well. You get the same probability. But I want you to understand this concept and use it because um, it's usually a shorter way of doing things. All right, guys? So that's the complementary event of that. Let's do another one, question five. OK, have a look at this one, guys. A number is chosen at random, and we've got the different numbers here. It's like buttons, isn't it? Okay, so let's find the probabilities of firstly an even, probability of an even number. Now guys, how many even numbers do we have? Well, all the possible numbers are 9. We have 1 all the way through to 9, isn't it? So there's 9 possible outcomes. That's the total. Remember, if we want the probability, we always put the number of event of what we're looking for over the total number of outcomes. So that's what I did to start off with. And let's count the even numbers. Um, 2, uh, 4, 6, 8, they're all the even numbers, aren't they? So that's what I'm going to put on the numerator. So there's 4 even numbers out of the 9. So 4 out of 9 is the probability of even. All right, let's do the next one. Not even. Probability of not being even. Now, not being even, if you can realize on the diagram, is pretty much um, those ones. 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 are the non-even ones, so it's the remaining five, isn't it? But instead of counting them up like that, let's try it the complementary event rule way. All right, guys? So probability of not even is the complement of even. So we can do one minus the probability of even, and then we'll get the complementary probability. So remember that was the probability of even? One minus four over nine would simply become five over nine, isn't it? And as we just counted, it's exactly five out of the nine. It's exactly the same probability. So again, I want you to get familiar with this method because you'll be using it a lot. Um, that's complementary probability. All right, guys? Let's do another one. Question six. A number is chosen at random. We've got the numbers one, two, three, four, five. Pro find the probability of a prime number. Now, hopefully everyone knows what a prime number is. It's numbers that are divisible by one and itself only. Now, please remember, guys, one is not a prime number, something that a lot of people tend to get confused with. Two is the smallest prime number. So I'm going to start by, uh, okay, let's first start by putting down all the outcomes on the denominator. So it's one, two, three, four, five. All of them will just go into the denominator. And if we count the um, prime numbers, it starts with 2. So not 1, it starts with 2. 2 is the smallest possible prime number we have. And then we have 3, and then we have 5. Those are the prime numbers, aren't they? So we'll put the 3 on the numerator. So if we count them up, there's 1, 2, 3 prime numbers out of the 5. So it's 3 out of 5. That's the probability of a prime number. Now, let's find the probability of not prime number, not a prime number, which means the complement of a prime number. That's the probability of a prime number. So we'll simply do 1 minus the probability of the prime number um, to get the probability of not a prime number. So it's going to be 1 minus that one, which is simply going to be our answer here. So as you can see, guys, all I'm doing is subtracting away the probability of being prime, and then you get the probability of not being prime. Simple as that. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys are getting familiar with this rule. We'll do a few more. Let's go on to 7. All right, we've got some people here. We've got some little children here. Um, it says, a student is chosen at random. 
Now part A, it says find the probability that Tim is not chosen. Now you can see I've labeled um, all of their names for you and you can see that the one on the left is Tim. This, uh, this guy is called Tim. And we want to find the probability that Tim is not chosen. So Tim is not chosen is the probability of Tim chosen, isn't it? Sorry, sorry. Tim not chosen is the complementary event of Tim being chosen, isn't it? So we'll use our complementary event rule. It's going to be 1 minus the probability of Tim. And that's simply going to be 1 minus the probability of Tim, which is just one of them out of the total of six children. So it's 1 out of 6. And 1 minus 1 over 6 will simply be 5 out of 6. That's the probability of Tim not being chosen. All right, guys, so that rule that we keep using here. Um, B, find the probability of not a girl, which means we'll have to do 1 minus the probability of being a girl. You can see that three of them are girls here, guys. We've got Amy, Mia, and Eva. Those are girl names, aren't they? And the picture can kind of, you can kind of see from the picture that they're girls. So, find the probability of not a girl is 1 minus the probability of being a girl. So it's 1 minus the 3 out of the 6 children. And that will still be 3 over 6, isn't it? So let's simplify this, because I think we can simplify it by 3. 3 is a common factor. So let's cross that one out. And let's cross 6 out. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the final answer is 1 over 2. Half. Half of them are not a girl. All right, guys. So again, I'm using the complementary event rule. All right, let's do C. Find the probability. The first letter is not M. So if we want to find the probability of the first letter not being M, we have to do 1 minus the probability of the first letter being M. So how many are M? How many starts with M? We've got Mia. We've got Max. And that's pretty much it. Those two are starting with M. So what we'll do is do 1 minus the probability of it starting with M, which is 1 minus 2 out of 6. And 1 minus 2 out of 6 will become 4 out of 6. So now we can simplify it, because I know that 4 and 6 are both divisible by 2. Let's cancel the 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And let's cancel the 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we simply have 2 over 3 as our probability. Okay, okay, guys, um, all I'm doing is using the complementary event rule for probability. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do question eight, guys. Uh, I've got some fruits and veg vegetables here. I've got an apple, I've got an orange, and I've got an onion. Hopefully you guys can see that from the diagram. Now, what these values mean, those are the probabilities of each item, so each fruit or vegetable. So probability of being an apple is 0 0.2, probability of being an orange is 0 0.5, and probability of being an onion is 0 0.3. Okay, guys, so those are the probabilities I want you to refer to. And then we can do A. It says find the probability of not an apple. Not an apple is the complementary event of an apple. So to find the probability of this, we'll just do 1 minus the probability of an apple. Yes, guys, so the complementary event rule again. And what's the probability of being an apple? This is the apple, 0 0.2. So we'll do 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. As simple as that. That's the answer. Now we'll do the next one, not being a fruit. So probability of not a fruit. Now, I'm sure you know that apples are fruits, oranges are fruits, but an onion, we wouldn't call that a fruit. So we'll do 1 minus the probability of a fruit. And as I said, only these two are fruits. And remember, guys, you have to refer to these probabilities. The probability of an apple is 0 0.2. Probability of orange is 0 0.5. So we'll do 1 minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 added together, because these are the probabilities of an apple and orange, respectively. So 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5 is 0 0.7. So 1 minus 0 0.7 is 0 0.3. That's the probability of not a fruit. And for those who can realize, that's pretty much the same as this one, isn't it? So it's pretty much that's the only um, non-fruit here, so it must be kind of matching. But I want you to see that you can kind of get it through this. And the reason why I want you to actually do this is to show some working and use the complementary event rule. All right, guys, should we do another one? It says, find the probability the first letter is not O. So find the probability that the first letter of that fruit or vegetable is not an O. So we have to do find one minus the probability of the first letter being O, yeah? And guys, how many um, out of these three begin with an O? Well, orange begins with an O, and onion starts with an O. So those two 
are the ones that we have to subtract away from 1. So, 1 minus the probability of orange is 0 0.5, onion is 0 0.3. So make sure you add it together. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.8, and 1 minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.2. And again, guys, I hope you realize that same as just being an apple. And because we only have these three, you have to make sure that they kind of match up. But again, I want you to understand this complementary event rule for probability.